I'd like to welcome you all here today. My name is Nordin Boarouj. I'm an anesthesiologist at Maiselin Clinic in Algeria. I am a regional anesthesia and pain enthusiast. I'm the founder of Regional Anesthesia Masterclass and Anesthesia Club. We help anesthetists to improve their skills in use of ultrasound guided regional anesthesia. Today, I'm going to show you how to understand the sonoanatomy of the abdominal wall. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you the sonoanatomy of the medial abdominal wall, the mid-axillary region and rectus sheet, the sonoanatomy of subcostal region, and the sonoanatomy of the erector spine. Understanding anatomy is fundamental to the rational practice of the ultrasound guided anesthesia and the success of abdominal wall blocks. This is an illustration of different muscles that covers the abdomen. External oblique muscle is the outermost muscle of abdominal wall, inferiorly attached to the inguinal ligament, superiorly attached to the fifth through twelfth ribs. Internal oblique muscle is attached to the iliac crest and the thoracolumbar fascia, superiorly attached to the 10th, 11th and 12th ribs. In the midline, the muscle encases the rectus abdominis and attached to linea alba. The transversus abdominis muscle is the innermost muscle. It forms anteriorly a fascia joined aponeurosis of internal oblique and pass posterior to rectus abdominis. Posteriorly attached to lombodorsal fascia, attached inferiorly to the inguinal ligament and the iliac crest, superiorly attached to the lower six ribs, T6, T12. In the medial abdominal wall, the rectus abdominis muscles lie on either side of the midline, attached inferiorly to the pubis, superiorly attached to external surface of the costal cartilages, 6th and 8th ribs. It contains a number of tendinous intersections which are responsible for creating the six-pack appearance of the abdominal wall. This uh, cross-section anatomy shows the different layers of the abdominal wall. From outside to inside, the different layers are skin, subcutaneous tissue and fat, rectus, abdominis muscle, external ab oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, transversus abdominis muscle, transversalis fascia, preperitoneal fat, peritoneum, and abdominal contact. The nerves that innervate the abdominal wall arise from the ventral rami of T6 and L1 spinal nerves. These nerves originates in the spine and wrap around the body to provide innervation to lateral and anterior abdominal wall. The dorsal branch of spinal nerves innervates muscle and skin of the medial back. The ventral branch of spinal nerves innervates chest and abdominal wall. The two main branches are lateral cutaneous branch and anterior cutaneous branch. The continuation of the T6, T11 intercostal nerves enter the tap in the subcostal region. Along that course, they enter a fascial plane between the transversus abdominis muscle and the internal oblique muscle accompanied by blood vessels in what is known the TAP compartment. The most common landmarks to remember are innovation of uh, xiphoid by T6 and uh, the umbilicus T10. Many surgical incisions occur near the midline of abdomen. Subcostal tap and rectus sheet blocks can be highly effective for those procedures. 
One approach to add in identifying the layers is to start in the midline with an actual orientation of ultrasound transducer. Scan all abdomen from midline. This allows identification of the linear alba and rectus abdominis muscle. The rectus abdominis muscles lie on either side of uh, the midline of the abdominal wall. They are encased within fascial envelopes, the rectus sheet, formed by the tendinous portions of the, the abdominal muscles. The two abdominal muscles are separated in the midline by the fusion of the aponeurosis of the abdominal muscle, the linea alba. The linea alba can be readily identified with ultrasound. The ultrasound transducer is then moved laterally along the mid-axillary line. The three muscles are then identified. Identify abdominal wall muscle layer, skin, subcutaneous tissue and fat, rectus abdominis muscle, external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle, transversus abdominis muscle, transversalis fascia, preperitoneal fat, peritoneum, and abdominal content. In the mid-axillary mid approach, the tap is identified close to the mid-axillary line. The transducer should be placed in the mid-axillary line between iliac crest and the subcostal margin. The transversus abdominis layer is usually the most hypoechoic of the muscle layers, with the external oblique muscle being the most hyperechoic. Tilt may be applied to the transducer to better visualize the fascial layers. Needle is advanced into the tap and local anesthetic is injected using an in-plane needle technique. Injection of the local anesthetic into the tap separates the muscle layers. The superior epigastric artery enters the rectus in the subcostal region near the xiphoid process. From below, the inferior epigastric artery enters the rectus sheet. When performing tap locks, color flow Doppler should be used to identify these arteries or the, their branches in the planted needle path before needle insertion. The superior epigastric artery enters the rectus in the subcostal region near the xiphoid process. Local anesthetic deposited in the rectus sheet by simple injection or with catheters is used to provide analgesia to the, the anterior and medial abdominal wall. Under ultrasound guidance, the local anesthetic or catheter is placed in it, is placed in the posterior rectus sheet between the posterior sheet and the posterior portion of rectus abdominis muscle. This video shows how to perform a rectus sheet block. Local anesthetic deposited in the rectus sheet by simple injection or with catheters is used to provide analgesia to the anterior and the medial abdominal wall. Under ultrasound guidance, the local anesthetic or catheter is placed in the posterior rectus sheet between the posterior sheet and the posterior portion of rectus abdominis muscle. In the upper abdomen, exactly in the subcostal region, the transversus abdominis forms its aponeurosis much closer to the midline. In fact, the transversus abdominis muscle underlaps the rectus sheet. In this ultrasound clip, the transducer is translated laterally just below the costal margin. As the scan moves past the lateral edge of the rectus muscle, the external oblique muscle appears superficial to the transversus abdominis muscle. 
The internal oblique muscle is not yet visible because in this region the muscle has transitioned to its aponeurosis which is sandwiched between the external oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. As the transducer is moved even further laterally, the internal oblique muscle becomes between the external oblique and transversus abdominis muscles. Classic descriptions of the abdominal wall layers call for identification of three layers. However, in many patients, the fourth layer is visible laterally, the preperitoneal fat. In more posterior scans, in the obese patients, the preperitoneal fat layer can be proeminent and we see antified as an abdominal wall layer. This layer can be confused with the transversus abdominis muscle layer. Practical takeaways. Place a supine position in an axial plane in the middle of abdomen above the umbilicus. Starts with a depth of four centimeters, usually adequate except in very obese patients. Adjust depth to view the rectus abdominis and the portion of the abdominal content. Identify the linea alba. Identify the rectus abdominis muscle on either side of the linea alba. Observe the abdominal contents deep to the rectus abdominis muscle. Slowly move the transducer laterally maintaining an axial view. Slightly angled to be parallel with the costal margin. Identify the lateral edge of the rectus abdominis. Identify the transversus abdominis muscle. Repeat the scan using Doppler. Identify an, any significant blood vessel within the rectus sheet. Begin again with ultrasound transducer over the midline. Scan laterally until you are over the midline of rectus abdominis muscle. Move the transducer in the midaxillary line between iliac crest and the margin costal. In most individuals, these layers can be readily identified with ultrasound. In some individuals, it can be more challenging to identify which layer is which.